The words personality and trait go hand in hand. Whenever you take online quizzes about your personality, you probably get some traits as your answer. Well, these quizzes show us how we're different from other people, but sometimes we share the same answers as our friends and our neighbors. In this video, I'm going to be discussing how trait perspective of psychology works, and how psychologists have organized different traits to show how we relate to different people. So what is a trait? What's not a trait? Well, I'll show you by describing the different traits of traits. First, traits describe meaningful differences among individuals. Let's talk about eating food. Everyone eats food. It is a behavior that we all participate in to survive. It's driven by biology. The way that you eat your food, however, could be a sign of different personality traits. Sometimes, the habits in which you eat your food could be signs of cultural differences. Some people are taught to eat with their hands. Others are taught to keep their mouth closed or maybe even slurp their soup. But if someone is in a room with people who have different eating habits, their personality may greatly influence how they approach the situation. Are they conscious of how people are eating around them? Do they even care to fit in? Well, that has a lot to do with your personality. Already, you can start to see how genetics, your culture, and your personality all form a complicated spider web that can be hard to trace. So secondly, traits are stable and they must be consistent. People display signs of personality traits among different situations all throughout their life. Again, culture, rules, and the context of a situation will have a big impact on how someone behaves. But if someone is an honest person, this trait will heavily influence what it takes for that person to lie, or maybe even justify these actions later. Now, social psychology is another thing that I'll be talking about later on in the next coming months, but it really likes to take a look at instances when people break their normal personality traits. Third, traits are usually displayed as dimensions or spectrums with extremes at both ends. For example, introverts and extroverts is one of the most common sets of personality traits that we know and talk about. But I'm sure that you know not everyone identifies or displays the behavior of an extreme introvert or an extreme extrovert. Some people are ambiverts and fall in the middle of these two extremes. Fourth, traits rely on language. If I don't have a word that can describe how a person is or how they act, then we cannot call it a trait, right? Now, there's something called the lexical hypothesis theory that says if there's a behavior that is so prominent in human behavior throughout time, well, we'll create a word for it. If we don't have a word that describes a trait or behavior, then it must not be very prevalent and it doesn't deserve a word. You need to know that lexical hypothesis is a theory, though. Last, but certainly not least, traits are objective behavior. Now, this is especially important to remember if you're describing yourself or another person's personality traits. An introvert is not necessarily good or bad. Introversion may benefit a person person in certain situations, but you can't write off any trait simply as good or bad. Culture, again, plays a part here. In some cultures, competitive behavior may be an advantage, like if you're growing a startup, but it may be a disadvantage if you're trying to develop meaningful relationships. So you need to know that traits aren't good or bad. Now, you may be raised in a culture that teaches you to be agreeable or amicable. Someone across the world may be raised to be independent and put themselves first. Both traits seem more positive or negative, depending on whatever your goals, your values, or your beliefs are. Traits must also be a behavior. For example, we can say that someone is six feet tall. That's not a personality trait though, it's a physical trait. It's also not a behavior. On the same note though, being six feet tall or having long hair or looking beautiful will affect how other people behave towards you. And how other people behave towards you will start to affect how you behave towards them. So keep this in mind, it's especially important in social psychology. So there are four people to know in the world of trait psychology. And these psychologists have spent almost their entire life work looking at how we can organize traits into a central group of terms or spectrums that can be applied to all people. Basically, they write in the answers to our personality quizzes, so let's get to know them. Number one is Gordon Allport. Gordon Allport is a great trait theorist to start off with. Back in the early part of the 20th century, he went through the dictionary and found, this is amazing, 4,500 words that could be considered personality traits. Nowadays, there are around 18,000 trait descriptive adjectives. But anyways, from those 4,500 words, he came up with three different types of traits. The first category can consists of cardinal traits. Now these traits and behaviors rule how you approach things that you're passionate about. Punctual is a classic example of a cardinal trait. It is usually influenced by some desire to impress or to be ready to get to work. If someone had to describe you in three words, those three words that they pick would probably be your cardinal traits. In fact, some traits are actually named after people. For example, Machiavellian, Freudian, or Christ-like. The second category is central traits. 
These traits are found to a certain degree in almost every person. Honesty, agreeableness, or jealousy. They're all considered central traits that may or may not come from our genetic makeup. And last is secondary traits. These traits may apply to different situations depending on the context of that situation. In general, you might be a respective person. But if you dislike a certain authority figure, or maybe even another person in your life, people may see a rude side to you. Another word for these are attitudes or preferences. The second person we need to take a look at is Cattell. When you look at 4,500 words, you're bound to find some repeats and synonyms. Well, in the 1960s, Cattell took 4,500 trait words from Allport and moved them down to 171 traits. He wasn't done yet. He used something called factor analysis to look for trends in these 171 words and narrow them down to the most influential traits. He came down to 16 using a process called factor analysis. Now, factor analysis can be used to look at enormous amounts of data in order to look for trends and see which elements are the most influential or which ones are the most important and to get rid of redundancies. You remember what I said about traits being on a spectrum? Well, Cattell's 16 personality traits were on a spectrum, so each of these 16 words had a direct opposite. Most people fit in somewhere in the middle of these two extremes. I guess I'll put up a picture on the screen of these 16 dimensions. Anyways, as you can see, some of these personality traits are very similar. For example, private under introversion is very similar to loner under independence. The third person that we need to talk about is Isink. Isink had a specific job whenever he developed his theory. Around the same time that Cattell was developing his theories on personality, Isink worked at a psychiatric hospital in London. Now, his job was to make an initial assessment of the patients. Isink noticed that there were certain trends. He found that soldiers, for example, seemed to answer questions in a very similar way. Maybe these answers revealed specific traits that led a person to become a soldier. Isaac called these first personality traits. What Isaac is most known for, however, is the PEN model, P-E-N. He narrowed down the most important personality traits to just three traits, psychoticism, extroversion, and eroticism. Now, these might sound like negative traits, but let's take a look at what they actually mean. Psychoticism. Whenever an individual engages in risky and irresponsible behavior, people with high psychoticism are usually more aggressive. Extroversion. When an individual engages in a lot of social activities. Also, an extrovert is considered under aroused and their cortical arousal can actually be measured with skin conductance. And lastly is neuroticism. When an individual's mood and emotions fluctuate more than normal, we consider them neurotic. Isaac said that people experienced more flight or flight reactions than most people. Again, these are all on spectrums. Isaac theorized that we all display some level of these traits, but we just express them to different degrees. Part of his theory comes from the belief that our personality traits come from our genetics. Now, I saved the big five for last because we'll go through the theory in more detail in a whole video. Psychology credits a small group of psychologists with the development of this theory, and it seems to be the best one that we have so far. It is a happy medium between the three personality traits developed by Isaac and the 16 developed by Cattell. These are the big five, also known as the Ocean Theory. Similar to the PIN model, Ocean is an acronym for five different traits that all humans display some degree of. So take some time to think about your personality traits. You certainly have a lot of ways to assess the traits that you hold. Your friends and family already probably have a few choice words to describe your personality. Now, the more that you reflect on your personality, and remember, these traits are objective, the more that you can start to understand yourself. This self-awareness will help you find and approach opportunities that best fit your personality traits. For example, if you know that you're an introvert, you can use this knowledge to create a schedule or pursue opportunities that allow introverts to shine. Maybe you're not sure if you're an introvert or an extrovert. Well, you can check out my free three-in-one personality quiz in the description below. It basically combines three of the major personality quizzes into one quiz that you can take in under 10 minutes. It also predicts all kinds of things about you, like your political stances, your relationship style, your health. It's actually pretty cool. So if you like this video, feel free to watch some of the other videos in this personality series. And if you didn't enjoy this video, leave a comment below so that I can make these videos better. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.